Alright, this is OXDF, and today I'm looking at a domain that John Hammond found and showed us all in one of his recent YouTube videos. Uh, he was looking at a phishing email that had come in, and it had an HTML attachment. And that attachment looked spoofed a legit-looking Microsoft login form, and when the user would put in their password and hit submit, it posted those creds to this domain, hurleyauctions.us. And so... You know, John looked at the Whois information and actually reported the domain as malicious to the abuse folks, but uh, I wanted to take it a few steps further and see if I could do any pivoting off of it and find additional indicators, other um, domains, IPs associated with this group. Uh, I started in a blog post on oxdf.gitlab.io that shows kind of where I was going up to this point, but when I got to the Multigo point, it just felt like I was pasting a lot of, oh, click here, click here, and it just felt easier to put in a video, so I'm jumping back on YouTube to give it a try. Uh, I'm working out of the free community version of Multigo today. Uh, there is a paid version. This version is certainly limited in that you can only put up to 12 entities from any given uh, transform and that you're limited. I don't, there's some maximum number of, you know, a few hundred entities you can put on a chart, and that is actually a, a, something you will hit quickly if you start playing in here long enough. Um, if you're doing this in any kind of serious professional capacity, you probably want to invest in the paid version. Um, similarly, I'll be using a data source, uh, risk IQ, passive total. Uh, I'm, again, I'm using a free account here today. Uh, in past parts of my life, I've had access to the paid version and it does offer quite a bit more, but you can still make a lot of progress with the free accounts. So it's worth playing with. Uh, with all that said, I'm gonna jump right in and look at hurleyauctions.us. So I'll just uh, control V, paste it right in here. Um, Baltigo is smart enough to say, recognize that that's a domain and assign it the domain type. If for some reason it did not, a lot of times you'll paste something in and it comes as the default, uh, the default type, which is a phrase. So you get something that looks like this, and you know, maybe it was you know, www.aj.us, you know, something like that. And if you want it to actually be able to run transforms on it as if it's a domain, you need to make it a domain. So you can right click on it and go to this Thing to change the type and here under infrastructure you can set it to domain or if you had an IPv4 address or all, you know, all these different types of nodes um, but it's important that you get it right because if it's not the right thing you won't be able to run the right transforms so go ahead and get rid of that one for now I don't need it uh, and so I'm going to start with uh, here you have the base domain hurleyauctions.us um, it was actually a subdomain of this www that was in the John Hammond video, so I'm gonna go ahead and search for subdomains and get those added to the graph. And it actually finds the one that we saw from the video, but also three more, or two more. So I will take those, and uh, my favorite data source to start with when I have a domain is this source called Passive Total uh, Passive DNS Data. And so what, what that is, is they are out collecting DNS resolutions as they're happening in real time and logging that information. So when I come here and use the passive total get passive DNS with time, it's taking each of these four domains, sending it into that data set, and coming back with the IPs that those domains have resolved to. And so I can look here and very quickly with just that transform, I can say, okay, here's the www, and it was resolving to this IP address. This is the same IP that John saw when he was doing his analysis. Uh, and it's the first was first seen on August 9th and has been seen up to today. Interestingly, these other two domains both showed up on August 22nd and go through today. And I believe August 22nd is after John did his video. So even though John's out here publicly showing this, uh, these guys are still going and have created new subdomains that they're working off of. Um, that's pretty neat. I can come over here and do the same thing with the same data set off the IP. So this time I'm sending the IP back and saying, show me the domains it has resolved that have resolved to this IP. Uh, in this case, you can see it just adds three arrows pointing back to the same three subdomains. Um, I, I'm going to guess that I'm getting some sort of time limiting from RiskIQ here, that if I were to go back years, I probably would see other domains resolving to that IP, but it's certainly possible that over the course of this IP, uh, over the course of the lifetime of this IP, it was only being used to, you know, with the DNS associated with it over this time frame. Um, so it could be either way. Uh, one of the things John noted in his video and that uh, I saw, if you look at the blog post, um, was that there was an actual email address associated with the Whois information. Um, so if I come over here and look for the Whois transform um, to email address, this is actually not one of the passive total ones. It's one of the built-in Multigo transforms. Um, Whois information is freely available, so it's really easy for them just to write a transform that does that for us. So 
go ahead and run that and you can see it adds now two email addresses to our graph uh, the abuse at namecheap one that's useful to know in the sense that now we know this domain is associated with namecheap uh, but it's not it's certainly not something we want to pivot on uh, but allo mamsrs at gmail.com that's a unique gmail address and we're certainly interested to know like what other domains has this uh, email address registered so come over here and we will come back to and in fact because i have this filter in my transforms already for who is uh, the passive total who is search by email address is up and so i can do that and it's going to go off and find here we go it came back with if you look down here at the bottom it's in tiny text but it says you know transform passive total who is searched by email address return 10 entities that's one of them is the hurley auctions and there's nine new ones here and this is neat because you can see each of these is a some sort of dot us all matching kind of the pattern we saw with the hurley auctions each of them has sort of a kind of english words but jammed together but doesn't really make a lot of sense feel to it um so I, you know i look at these and i think these are all in the same category of domain and it feels like they fit together um, so i certainly want to keep digging in on these further uh, i can select the email address and go up here and do select children and now i get to select all of those domains i'm going to unselect the hurley auction since we already did that one and i'm going to go back here and do this again i'm going to do um, passive dns again on these new domains and this is the power of multigo is now i take all nine of these at once and just quickly throw them against risk iq get the data and bring it back and put it on the chart i could take each one individually and paste them into risk iq and do look at it more in depth and, and sometimes i'll want to do that if i can't decide if a domain actually looks relevant to the activity or not um, but for a quick initial look it's very useful just to pull all that data you can see here on the chart that a bunch of the domains return things um these three didn't return any ip resolutions again i think if i had the paid version i probably would be getting older activity associated with these maybe this is just outside the time window um it is interesting that four of the domains down here all come and pointing to this one ip so there's some activity here going on it looks like from june through potentially up till today um this one ip um no secrepo.com it's a dot com as opposed to a us it, it's certainly you know there's nothing to say that the same actor has to always use dot s dot dot us um this could or could not be related but i would you know want to be skeptical looking into it the fact that the resolutions to the same ip during the same time with the same email yeah it seems pretty related uh an obvious next step might be to select these four ips i just got and run passive dns on them again in fact i will go ahead and do that right now you have to be a little bit careful when you start doing this kind of thing because ip reuse is such a big thing that especially with paid risk iq where you could be going back years there's a decent chance that you'll just pull you'll, you'll start to eventually pull the entire internet onto your chart you know you're doing if you do this five or six times stepping out you all of a sudden you know you you've literally got everything on the internet and you're no longer related to the activity you're looking at um, so we can run this here and see what we get and yeah so very quickly you can see here that the the chart is starting to fill up here um if again if i was digging into this with some goal in mind other than just the curiosity um i certainly might be worth looking through all of these looking at the time frames figuring out which ones might be related and which ones not um if you if you have the ip resolved into two domains over the same time frame that's a much potentially more interesting thing um, although you have to think about shared hosting opportunities where this you know some hosting provider is hosting lots of domains so um, i'm going to go ahead and control z and remove those from the chart i think that was i think i got them all um if you ever want multigo just to redraw over here on the layout things you can just change the layout and it will you know stack it different ways for visibility um, so that's pretty cool uh i'm probably gonna stop doing the pivoting from here um but there are you know this there's so many transforms you can go into in fact one other thing i'll show um uh, if i just do select by type and domain uh there's one on here under passive total called get malware and this goes against their database of known malware samples associated with domains and when i run that i'm going to get out of this view real quick you can see that some of the domains so here here's our dub 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 hurleyauctions.us I, I wonder if one of these hashes right here is actually the one that john was looking at um, it also tags the domain now with this phrase emerging threats from proofpoint so that's a sign that somebody out there in this case proofpoint knows about this domain and is calling it malicious and uh here you know one of the other domains data has a associated sample with it um, 
this is where if I had a paid virus total account, um, I could take, you know, put my API keys in here and start sending these hash hashes off to virus total and seeing what it knows about them. Um, maybe even pull down, you know, if it finds them in there, I could pull down the files and look at them and see if they look, is, is this sample right here, this 648B8, uh, uh, is that another HTML document spoofing a Microsoft login form or spoofing some other kind of login form? Um, are, there, are there other things, you know, if I, once I pull two or three samples, I can start to write a YAR rule that might match and find other similar activity. And I could go run that against virus total and see if I can find more samples and start to flesh out again, bigger picture of what, what this actor looks like, what their tooling looks like. So um, again, there's a ton more pivots I could be exploring, but I'm going to go ahead and call it here today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, this is, I'm getting kind of off my typical medium here. So uh, leave a comment and let me know if you like seeing this kind of thing in video form, or if you prefer having it in a written, written format. Um, thanks a lot. And I'll talk to you next time.